Hello and welcome to the home of the ghost owl, continuing with our Warhammer the Old World series, looking at the main rulebook. Uh, one, because I think it's important to take a look at the main rules before we dive into the faction, but two, it's also the only thing that's arrived for my pre-order. So next up, we're looking at forming and using units, and this is where we're starting to get into quite specifics about rank and flank games and then Warhammer the Old World slash Warhammer Fantasy um, uh, uh, more specifically. So what have we got up first? So there are formation types. Uh, these will be listed on the unit profile of what formation types a unit can use. Now you have close order, open order and skirmish are the sort of the generic three types of formations. And then you can have unit specific formations, a good example of which is the uh, the Bretonian Knights here in Lance Formation. That is specific to Bretonian Cavalry. Uh, and of course, that will be explained in the relevant army roster. So close order formation is the most common and essentially all models uh, are in base to base contact and they're facing the same direction all ranks must have the same number of models with the exception of the rear rank and they move and fight as a single entity so what you can see here these three infantry units are very much in a close order formation now within close order formation there are three states in which it can exist. The first one is combat order. Now, combat order means that it is the unit is wider than it is deep. All of the infantry units you see in this picture are in combat order. Now, what do you get for being in combat order? Well, you get plus one rank bonus for each rank up to a maximum determined by its troop type. You can see troop type becoming quite important. Some special rules allow you to increase this. And also you get a uh, plus one combat result bonus on top for being in combat order. This is what I expect most units to be in most of the time. But you can also form marching column. This is where a unit would be deeper than it is wide. So you could be uh, four models across at the um, uh, across, and you could be, you know, having seven or eight ranks in theory. Uh, what what does that mean though? What does it give you? Well, unfortunately, you get no rank bonus if you're in marching column, and you can't charge, but you do gain triple movement. Uh, now. Overall, I think this is kind of a niche ability. I don't expect to see many formations using marching column, and I don't expect to use it much myself. Maybe there could be some specific cases where you find a unit might have won a combat out on the flank. It's quite a long way from the battle. It decides to reform into a marching column, get the triple movement, and then it will have to reform again to get into combat order. So, um, you know, some, some interesting things there, but I don't expect to see it that often. I think it's quite niche. Uh, and then the final state is a disrupted unit. Now, a disrupted unit is one that's been engaged in the flank or rear in melee combat by a unit that has a unit strength of five or more. So it's not number of models, it's a unit strength, and we will be coming on to unit strengths. Uh, the other uh, way that you can be disrupted is if 25% of the models in the unit are in difficult terrain or are straddling an obstacle, such as a fence or a low wall, for example. If your unit is disrupted, you gain no rank bonus. So not a good thing to be disrupted is a very good thing if you're able to get a flank or a rear charge on a unit. Now, in terms of then using these units, uh, when you remove casualties, casualties are always removed from the rear rank, from one end to the other. So you start at the back, you start on one side and you pull that one, then that one, then that one and so on. Uh, models um, that are stepping forward cannot attack. Now, basically, what that means is 
if you've been attacked from the front, let's take the Tomb King unit on the right-hand side here. If they've been attacked from the front and they've taken, let's assume there's no champions before anyone starts getting into the weeds. Um, uh, they're all just generic um, Tomb Guard, right? And they've taken five casualties. So in theory, every member of that front rank has died. And what happens is these guys in the back are essentially stepping forward. Now, rather than messing around, moving individual models, taking them away and moving other ones forward, you just take from the back rank. But those models, in theory, have stepped forward. Now, if you have stepped forward, you can't attack. Therefore, if this Tomb Guard unit took five casualties and had no champion, then that unit would not be able to attack back. Now, you can have situations where you have single rank units. Maybe you've got some skeleton archers and they're in a 20-man single rank wide line. If that is the case, um, then you always remove casualties from one end and work across. Now, uh, model and unit facing. So every uh, unit has a front two flanks and rear arcs based upon a 45 degree angle essentially what that means if we go back and look at our tomb guard unit here you have the front arc as you can see here you've got two flank arcs one on each side in the rear arc and the 45 degree angle is based upon coming out directly out of the corner yeah so if you look at that sort of 45 degree angle 90 degrees forward and, and across split it in half and it actually comes through the corner of the base and that gives you your 45 degree angle now that also impacts in terms of line of sight so models can only draw a line of sight in a 90 degree vision arc corresponding to the front arc so the front arc is obviously here um, and 90 degrees means that these guys can see out to the side right so they can see across some of their flank arc models and units however always block line of sight therefore if you look again in this picture on the right hand side the unit in front is blocking line of sight at the front from the unit behind now if a model is partially obscured i.e you're looking line of sight and it is partially obscured it is considered to be in cover now if half or less of the model is obscured, then it's only in partial cover. If half, if, if more than half of the model is obscured, it is in full cover. So that is something to remember, and we'll come on to more detail about what being in cover means when we get to the shooting phase of the rulebook. Again, I hope that was useful. We're starting to get into more specifics now about rank and flank uh, and Warhammer the Old World and how Warhammer the Old World does rank and flank. So I hope, I I hope you guys found that useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. It's free for you to do, and it's a big, big deal for me. So thank you for that in advance. You've been watching The Ghost Style. I'll see you all very, very soon. <laughs>